And the consequence of all of this has been, first of all, the trebling of the number of tax havens. You can have the whole PowerPoint in our link, Mark, if you don't need to take notes. Um, a long-term trend towards substitution of progressive taxes in place of progressive taxation. Pressure on poorer countries to offer fiscal incentives to attract investment. Now, fiscal incentives involve something called tax expenditure. In other words, you're spending taxpayers' money to subsidize inward investment. A general shift of the tax burden away from capital onto labor and consumers. Now, think about that from an economist's point of view. It means the relative costs of capital comes down, but the cost of labor rises. You're going to substitute capital for labor. In other words, you're actually going to reduce job creation. That's the meta story at a global level. Um, and not surprisingly, we've seen this. Records of inequality in Britain, which we haven't seen since Charles Dickens kind of walked the streets of London. And it's going to get very much worse in the next 10 years. Is this a familiar story? It's worse because the financial market secrecy that tax havens provide undermines globalization in three key sorry, seven key ways, which are the nine. Uh, but when we first started campaigning around this, the Norwegian government, which as you know has an anti corruption agenda, said, okay, we will put your your key propositions to the test, and they set up a Royal Commission of Inquiry in Norway uh, and appointed some very leading, leading economists to <coughs> test our ideas. First idea was that the secrecy behind tax havens leads to an increase in capital, the cost of capital, because it increases the risk premium. That one's pretty much unarguable. The next one's also unarguable. It harms tax systems and public finance. Greece, Italy, other countries around the world. It's, that one's quite clear. It facilitates economic free riding. In other words, some companies can engage in very aggressive tax avoidance, others can't. The company I used to direct was a small company in Britain. We only traded in Britain. We couldn't use offshore tax avoidance structures. Although we provided much, much better quality services, um, our competitors were always able to undercut us because they weren't paying, they weren't paying tax. We were. So from an economist's point of view, whether they're coming from the left or the right, this is a massive market distortion. It leads to the re reduction in the efficiency of resource allocation because by and large multinational companies are now in the job of chasing tax holidays rather than investing where they should. In other words, it undermines Ricardo's principles of, uh, of, of, of comparative advantage for the economists amongst you. Worse, it increases the profitability of economic crime, which means that more people will engage in economic crime and you get organized crime banks turning themselves into organized criminal networks. My favorite example at the moment is the Swiss bank UBS, which is, in fact, an organized crime network and has been taken apart by the Indian Revenue in, in, in America. They've actually fessed up. But I also confronted them in Jersey. There was a substitute in Jersey that was engaged in organized crime, and when it was taken to court in Jersey, pleaded guilty to criminal recklessness as a result of that Wall Street Journal investigation. But they, you know, the levels don't change their spots. They remain essentially engaged in promoting what they call wealth management, what you call tax evasion. It encourages rent-seeking activities. Rent-seeking means that rather than investing in productive activity, people are shifting their money out of Russia and buying British football clubs or, or large properties uh, at number one Hyde Park, which is in the news at the moment. Uh, blah, blah, blah. In other words, they're not actually genuine capitalists. They're just rentiers seeking rental incomes because that's where you can make a quick scan or speculating on the commodity markets or whatever. Now, this is the most toxic and the most corrosive fraud. It undermines institutions. It undermines our confidence that the laws are being evenly applied, that tax is being paid evenly and correctly, that our politicians are not being bought, our political parties are not involved to offshore interests. You know the whole story. This is a very toxic. Now, the Norwegian government accepted all of these propositions and published a report, which you can download from our website and their website. But this is the, the effect of tax 
taken on the organization. Worse, I think it's fair to say, and this is what Paul Volcker, the former head of the Fed Reserve, said, um, tax havens introduce complexity because structures being created across the world, dancing from one tax haven from Luxembourg to, to Cayman, to Ireland, and so on, in order to achieve what's called regulatory arbitrage, to find the gaps in the global regulatory system. It's no coincidence that virtually every collateralized debt instrument ever issued was issued in a tax haven like Cayman, or Jersey, or Luxembourg. It was able to take advantage of two things, lax regulation and tax avoidance structures. Same applies to hedge funds, most of the shadow banks, the so-called structured investment vehicles, all of them set up. I've never found one which wasn't set up in the tax haven. Let me know if you don't know any. And that's what Paul Volcker was referring to there. 